Okay, hey guys, it's Christopher Williams, and um, yeah, so right now I'm in the middle of watching Marie Yanovich uh, have her um, discussion in court over the Donald Trump impeachment and all the allegations that he has had the connections with Russia and also ties with other countries that are inhibiting him from continuing to continuing his um, um, his job as president of the United States. Now, which, what is obvious here is that Trump is literally up against his own people. So it's kind of weird because here you go with Marie Yanovich. Her allegations is saying that everywhere she turned, she destroyed things. She made things worse than they already were. You know, her peace mentality within herself just did not dignify enough gratitude along with other people in foreign countries. Um, and it just made everything worse. Now, we're hearing from Donald Trump's party that everything that they hear on the media about him are, are just lies and made up allegations. Um, however, we have someone by the name of Marie Yanovich who's literally testifying more stronger than, almost more stronger than the men are. Um, not that some of the men aren't, you know, doing their best when they're trying to combat over a testimony or trying to um, disfuse a dispute. But if you can see the people behind these pulpits who are judges and appointing these people with certain type of crimes and um, wanting to know information from the people who are ambassadors and things like that, they are very, um, very um, pushy and bully-like when it comes to getting an answer out of a party. Um, as you can see, um, as Marie Yanovich was ans was answering the questions, she actually, you can tell by when you look in her eyes or just by her demeanor, you can actually tell that Marie Yanovich was hesitant, but she was only hesitant to give a straightforward answer, not knowing what type of response may come from um the guy that was appointing the questions. Now, as you can see, the person appointing the questions in court was actually, um, his demeanor was more straightforward. And it, it to me, it seems like his demeanor was for um, more negative towards anyone who was against Donald Trump trying to support him. Um, and I think that that kind of made her feel and the other men that was actually inside of the um, of the court in the pulpit testifying, they felt some type of way. Also, you can tell because of the way of the demeanor that the the judge was answering the questions. It was a little bit more. It was too much um, pushy and you know one sided. You can you may not he may not have said it, but you can look at him and demonstrate. Um, by the actions and the way he was answering those questions or asking the questions, excuse me, to the people who were in ambassadors and things like that. It was a little bit um, like you better answer this, like like there is no other option or why would you feel this way against Donald? And, you know, it's almost like they his their the questions to the people who were, were being answered, um, like, um, who were answering them like uh, Marie Yanovich and the other people from the Democratic Party, it seems like they were being pressured into answering questions. And if they did not give an answer that was not um, liked by the person that's giving the questions, then red flags would be raised up. You know, I, I felt like there was some type of tension within the court system in that room. And there's more people who felt the same way of Marie Yanovich and the other people on her side of the party, um, they felt her, they, there's other people that felt just like her as well, but they were not given that chance to testify in court. So, 
you know, the whistleblower took forever to come out. And there's only one reason why the whistleblower took forever to come out. And that's because, for one, they're getting secondhand and firsthand information that it could be third and fourth hand. I'm pretty sure it is because they're confused about where the information is coming from. But nobody was born yesterday. And we can't believe allegations and we can't believe them. But whatever your heart tells you to believe, I'm pretty sure, you know, you're going to do it. And if it gets deeper and deeper, um, sooner or later, someone is going to feel the same way. And it's going to be a problem because that's starting to weigh a little bit more than it should be weighing. However... I did find it way overly outstanding because there are so many people who are witnesses and so many people who believe that um, the system is corrupt in errors that it is and want to speak out, but fearing their lives to speak out because of the dangers it may cause them if they do tell the truth that will inhibit someone from um, pursuing a job that they've kept for years. Now, Marie Yanovich, I'm not going to get too much into detail saying that, you know, somebody did this, somebody did that. All I'm going to do is connect the sides and have you guys put the pieces together yourself. Now, Marie Yanovich said that she's also been out there in uh, Ukraine for over 35 years. And what was odd was that all of a sudden, she was told by not Donald Trump himself, but by other officials that worked for Donald, telling Marie Yanovich that she could no longer do her job out there in Ukraine, which she's been out there for 35 years. Remind you that she's been out there for 35 years. They've been having her do their duties. They've been... respectful enough and responsible enough to choose her to negotiate things to the United States and back. And it was a little bit thrown off the off the charts here because all of a sudden, and not saying Donald Trump is doing this, but you guys put the pieces together, okay? All of a sudden, out of her 35 years, the end of her 35 years, in Ukraine, all of a sudden, she's forced to come back and fly back to America, knowing that her job intensively requires her to be in Ukraine. All of a sudden, she can no longer do work in Ukraine. She's been doing fine for all these years, and all of a sudden, Donald Trump's team sends someone else to put bugs in her ear to let her know that, she, that Marie is no longer allowed to be in Ukraine to do work. She hasn't had an issue before. Now, of course, some people in Ukraine are going to have some issues regarding how things work. And, you know, they may not like the decisions that we make in the United States. But that guys have to understand something. She's been doing this for about 35 years now. And Barack Obama has not said anything about Marie Yanovitz that required her to be removed from her position. Because if it was that serious, it would have been removed by him. They fire people in the political office every single day. That's nothing. The people who are in charge, who are in front, who are has who has a title to be held in the front line are the ones who take forever to get justice whenever they're doing something wrong. Of this, in this case, it's Donald here or any president. I'm pretty sure Obama, Barack Obama did something really extraordinary. I'm pretty sure, you know. We know that story. But anyways, I have actually witnessed that in the court system. And um, these guys are just like mad bullies. They are literally saying that we are being bullies, that Democrats are being bullies, that we are picking information that has not been solved, that cannot be explained, and they're digging up dirt in places that don't need digging when they have their own dirt to dig and we have responsibilities and we're behind this and we're behind that. And it's just a big mess. So now we have to deal with the political party being trusted, the Democratic Party being trusted, and the people that are doing the accusing 
they had to be trusted because now the Republican Party is saying that they made up everything. And the Democratic Party, of course, is saying that they didn't make up anything. Here's our proof. And you guys are being bullies and continue, continue to not accept the fact that we gave you proof of why we are in decision of why we're deciding to in, to do this impeachment. And you guys are just taking the rules and just taking the answers to the rules, the truth, throwing it out the window and let the president do whatever he wants to do. Now, I'm not trying to pick sides and say I'm for this president, I'm for that person, blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to see, I'm trying to connect where the bulliness is going on. Okay, it's, because right now they're saying that Marie Yanovich, we're hearing that Donald Trump made a tweet, made a tweet during um, the actual court session of the impeachment ruling. And here it is with Donald Trump's tweet saying that she, Marie Yanovich, was behind this scandal the entire time. And she's making it seem like she's not the cause of any type of allegations or anything that caused corruption. And... And she was behind everything and everywhere that she was placed from the United States to do service. She literally made it worse. Now, that's what his tweet was during the, the session. And I'm not sure how you feel about that. You guys got your own opinion, but that's what happened. So do not, do not say I said this and I said that. I'm just letting you know that you guys have to literally just start putting things together. Literally, just put them together. Because you got people who was really scared to make a stand to be to even people didn't don't even want to be labeled the whistleblower and then testify. Okay, so now you got all these other people who feel the same way, who they have truth that, that they have dug up against Donald Trump. And some people don't have the truth, but they have information, enough information that's going to call someone to be heard but it's kind of weird because all of a sudden when Donald Trump gets in the office no one wants to follow the rules all of a sudden some nobody is strong enough to say hey this person did this wrong nobody wants to show their face it's now starting to come out one by one little by little the whistleblowers are speaking they're just not coming all forcefully to the forefront to just expose themselves like that because they are not ready with the fact that Donald Trump may be as crooked as they think they is. His whole crew, they're thinking Donald Trump is, is as crooked as you, you can get it. And this is why I say that. It's because whenever something is going wrong, that the Trump Foundation is a part of. They always usually find a way to try to get back at a person for doing something. Now, as you can see, like I have not, I'm not trying to say that I'm I'm call, calling him a bully or calling him, um, you know, someone that you don't want to do business with. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is literally. Donald Trump, every everything I have seen on national television about something that Donald Trump is trying to do or he has done or anything that someone has done to Donald Trump that resulted in him not moving forward in what he wanted to move forward in because someone else's mistake or ability to work with that caused, which caused them to not move forward or slow down in anything in the process of them trying to move forward with his campaign. He has literally, I have literally heard him threaten them. Not, not in a bad way. Threaten them with their career or just threaten them in general. I mean, when I say threats, I hear people in court, like when Marie Yanovich was in court this morning, or the guy that was before him, her, his name was Mike. Um, and there was another guy before him. His name was um, Terry or or it was Tony or it was something. But 
um, he was definitely an ambassador. And um, he was told by one of the um, um, the court rulings, um, one of the professional men there, supposed to be professional, um, but they told her and him, they, they was for the Democrat now, they, the Republicans told the Democrat, you know, that, and it makes, and that's also is kind of funny too, is I see some, well, I see Democrat and Republicans on the pulpit trying to do something, trying to get, um, you know, information from whoever they're needing information from. So I can't say that, but mainly of the people that are answering the questions to the Democrats were Republicans. And the mainly of the, of the people who were answering, were asking the questions were the ones who were Republicans, who the ones who I feel were literally working with the Trump Foundation because they showed more favoritism through body language and speech when they were talking. And, um, um, no. Um, and, and that, that was it. So, so yeah, um, I'm sorry I got interrupted again. Um, but what I was saying, I'm trying to tell you, do not listen to anything from the media unless you guys can read people's minds and read people's like unless you can put pieces together do not listen to the media or anything unless you are because some people like literally just just don't read between the lines and they don't see because of all this information that's out there for them to just gener generate in their brain the first time they hear it something that big is going to make them like not even see deep in the picture because they're getting a deep picture um placed in front of them that's not even should be you know labeled that so um so th that that's what i've i've really en encountered and and you know i've also encountered people um the people that was in court t um letting the people know if you do s make this decision or choose not to say this or testify you do realize that you're going to be in really big trouble or you do realize that you're going to be um um, you're going to have to pay for your consequences. Now, for you to say that to someone who is entitled to do a certain type of job, which is report and give certain type of news or, or information to someone regarding your position or someone else's position, and you're told that if you're not giving that information up, then this is what the consequences are. But yet, the person that's giving you the information is not doing their job correctly while they're giving it to you. So why would that be? Why would that not be considered bullying or trying to talk someone into thinking another way or talk someone into not giving the information that this needed to be given out there? Because people are being that clever and trying to use that craftiness right there to try to generate a different idea when the idea is not even dealt with. So that's what happens whenever um, you deal with people who are working under the table trying to do something else. When something else is literally not coming up to the surface, but you have all this information and tensions is being raised up and then it's like you're following the law and then someone else has all the rules and the answers to um changing this story around into making it better but therefore you're going to a higher power to try to consult this power but this higher power is supporting this higher power because they're saying you don't have enough information but you just show them all the information and no one else wants to dig deep down and surface so it makes you think that they're working together and they're doing something behind the table because once you come into court and you have all the answers lying in front of you and you have, you know your rights and they know their rights and they're answering you questions that they should be trying to figure out themselves because they're in that position. And then you see what I'm saying? That's what happens when things are crooked and no one else believes the system because it hasn't been used the right way. So... Those that there you have it, you know, Marie Janovich, 
you know, she she did her thing. She did not back down. She continued to stay in her ground. She spoke to what was right. If something was going to seem silly or sound silly as a, a answered question, let may, let it be what it is. Just let it be sound and silly. Let it may look, you know, like something else. But it was the truth coming from Marie Yanovich. And they did not expect that coming from her, especially from a woman. That's why I'm so proud of her. That came from a woman who, who spoke clearly, who made no regrets. She didn't make any bad remarks. She kept everything honest. And it was everything that they, every question that they asked her, she gave them an answer, a, a legit answer, and they was not ready for it. They literally tried to harass her and make her do something totally out of her way of her job by answering some questions that had no benefit to the fact that they were in a position that required them to handle a situation and which they did not do because they uh, accepted the fact that every information that they were given to the testimony was to tear down the president of the United States, which had nothing to do with them doing their job after they heard their testimony. They say that they've been getting their answers and information from fourth hand and third hand and second hand and no one had enough information, which is so weird because I highly doubt that anyone would be in court without information that is not obtaining to the certain type of situation and have accurate information but yet it's not justified because the person that is supposed to be the justifier doesn't feel like your information is justifying enough for us to impeach or fire someone which is absolutely weird because who would waste their time who's been in the senate and working with convictions and and things like that who would waste all their time and go to court and did not win and not have any type i'm trying to figure that out so now i'm, I'm looking at this deeply and knowing because i've been through that same situation before i've been to a situation before where i've dealt with a person who was supposed to be in charge and they were breaking all the rules and then when you gave them insights about what you witnessed about what you've seen which was unfair and you took it up to the head person for them to resolve the issue and then that person doesn't resolve the issue because that person doesn't know why you're attacking this person when you clearly just show this person why you felt this way about this person being a, you know and, and it's still like what else do you want you just told me to show you everything and I showed you and now you tell me well why so that is how the system still works today. You guys can figure it out on your own. I'll see you guys later.